Is Warhammer for everyone? Is it? I don't know. Hey guys, welcome back to another Lords of War Games and Hobbies video. I'm Chris, this is Jay. If you're catching us for the first time, uh, you can check out videos like this twice a week where we talk about uh, poignant hobby topics, industry, retail shop, garbage, I don't know, whatever. Some, sometimes whatever. we just think of the most controversial thing. <laughs> and we just talk about that, it. This video is not like that at all. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so if you, so you can go back and check out our catalog of videos. Uh, so yeah, today we want to kind of discuss the this sort of like I don't know f philosophical idea or just the idea is like can Warhammer or like a, something like Warhammer be for everyone? Um, and I don't necessarily mean identity wise or like male female with that question. It's more just like how mass appeal can it be? How many people out of ten? could possibly want to do Warhammer. Yeah. That sort of question, right? Exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and and we can only give our perspective from selling these toys to people for a very long time. Um, many, over, many years, many, many years, over a decade. Uh, almost two decades. And yeah, there are some patterns. It's funny, we, we, we've seen this trajectory many times. It can go different ways. There's always a fork. So someone new or some prospective person kind of Either is thinking about it, uh, and they maybe they maybe they actually do buy a thing, and they're kind of on their way slowly, and then uh, very early on, doesn't take very long, maybe within a month or two, they'll either kind of keep chipping away at it, or they'll just drop it because it's just too much. Um, something right. about it doesn't jive. It's either too much labor, they just didn't like it. You know, like any hobby or sport or whatever you try and try uh, try for the first time, you may this may happen. Um, but Chris and I always invariably, sometimes we can tell pretty quickly um, within a short time. You know, internally we're like, mm, I don't know, <laughs> this might be, and the line is always, this might be too much. <laughs> you know, for this, and it doesn't mean that that person doesn't have the like intelligence or capacity no. or whatever. It has nothing to do with that. It's just. Maybe uh, it's too abstract or whatever. So, so, yeah. so to give a little history on this, so like obviously Jay and I have been doing the hobby for like close to 30 years mm -hmm. each, which is crazy to say out loud. It's a lot. Um, traditionally, Warhammer has been a very niche hobby. Um, and when I say that, you know, when we started and like, you know, even like growing up through the hobby a little bit, like most people didn't know what Warhammer was. No. Um, you, you have to, to kind of it. you had to really explain it to someone to a, to the, the recipient with a very puzzled fit, look on their face. They were right? always like, "Why?" <laughs> um, but it, there have all also been these like great periods of expansion uh, for Games Workshop and for like miniature hobby, the mm -hmm. model hobby. Um, one of those periods specifically was like when Warhammer Forty Thousand came out, uh, when GW like literally quadrupled five uh, X in size like yep. immediately because it was yep. so successful. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next big expansion was when Lord of the Rings came out in the yep. early 2000s. Yep. You were actually working there at that point. You got, in you a got store. to see that, how the ridiculous. New products were coming out. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, customers were walking in. We were in a mall, so it was easy, but they were walking in and you were just like, they'd be like, what is this? So I'd be like, oh, you watch Lord of the Rings? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd be like, oh, look, here's a bunch of models for it. And they're like, oh, okay. And, you know, it was, it was pretty massive. And, and like, I think those periods when those things happen, I think like that's when it Warhammer kind of like reaches out and touches mm -hmm. people in a way that's like it kind of breaks that wall. It did, yeah, yeah. Total War is the other one that was pretty massive. Um, for, for I remember Don, Donald War did that too. Donald War right? as well. The first the Donald original, War game was, was yeah. massive. Mm -hmm. One game of the year, which is like crazy yeah. at the time for a Warhammer yeah. game. Yeah, um, yeah. And it, it kind of breaks through and says like people are like, oh, what's Warhammer? I'm gonna go check that out. Yes. Right. And. Uh, and uh, yeah, and this new Amazon kind of partnership and all of Games Workshop's attempts at selling their IP recently with all the video games they make, um, their content they, they put out there that's not, their book series is like Black Library. This is a way that they're reaching out and touching people that aren't necessarily, um, you know, model builders or painters mm -hmm. or stuff like that. Um, and you could even argue on the doing it side of the hobby, like actually doing the hobby, it's never been easier to paint models, to learn how to paint models, mm -hmm. like with YouTube and um, just like contrast paints and like, yeah. so we're looking at probably what should be the golden era of like, <laughs> people should be able to find it now. 
Yeah. It's it's out there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not and, stigmatized either. People are kind of used to it now. And it's the like, bar is probably as low as it could be in terms of how hard it can be. Yeah. Like, I don't know how you drop the bar lower <laughs> for people. Yeah, I mean, it would have to be completely pre-generated. Like, right. Where you just, like open a box and it would have finished. to be not war not warhammer basically yeah, it, would be, be, it would be it would be yeah it would just be like toys a, a lego pop dolls or, or something yeah. <laughs> which you know they make those they make those like yeah. they started to make toys and stuff like yeah. that so they do sell that stuff yeah um yeah. and i guess my point it, 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 which is going to be maybe controversial maybe not is that warhammer can't ever be for everybody <laughs> i know it sounds it sounds brutal because ultimately the hobby's hard yeah it, yeah it, i th- i think the the IP and universe can be for everyone. If you're talking about like the books and the movies and the video games, that this all of that super accessible stuff. But if we're talking about the pure uh, modeling hobby bits, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't. Would think your wife be. watch a, a like a like a Rogue Trader series or like a, absolutely like, not? No, <laughs> maybe not for everybody. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Would she? Oh, would she? Would she watch like an Age of Sigmar fantasy esque, like Game of Thronesy kind of thing? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, okay, okay. I don't think okay. so. Though. No, probably not. I, I don't still. think so. It's okay. still. It's <laughs> that female market. It's tough. still so. It's it's. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. It's still so kishy and almost cringy sometimes that sure. I don't know. Yeah. It's I think because like, although there are very good cool narratives sprinkled in. Especially in 40k or horse heresy or whatever, you know there are obviously various literature that you know the Dan Abnett stuff and whatever that he's written in here and there that is like actually really good um, and deep and like not just about Space Marines shooting Tyranids in the head or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the vast majority is like you know, well, what are we doing here? It's like, oh, these guys are going to kill those guys or whatever. Like it's, I don't know. It, it, and even the notable <laughs> characters are just so wacky and kooky. Oh yeah. I don't know. Oh yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, even you could. I know people are going to torture me or whatever, but I mean, like, even if the limited Game of Thrones knowledge I have and the bit I've digested, I'm like, it's it's not that, like, you know, it, it, it's 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 not as deep as you want to think it is. It's, it's, it was just a very well-made show, but yeah, I wouldn't yeah. say it Production had this, was like, really good, yeah. crazy intrigue or whatever. Yeah. It's just, just, it was just an interesting show at the time. It came at the right time, probably, you know. Yeah, I think so. You know, I think so, yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know if it has the same... Um, so I, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's a good question. Now, like, I think everyone should should uh, that is mildly interested in it should give the hobby a try for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, there's nothing wrong though with giving it a try and then being like, oh, I don't like this. You know, that's, that's it's, perfectly it's, fine. It's also an interesting thing to talk about, like just in terms of like modern modern fast paced culture, kids coming up. Like, um, there's there's like video games have never been bigger. Yeah, and. You know whether whether anyone wants to admit it out loud or anything, but like those, you know, the, anyone's extra money competes with other other things, yes. right? So Warhammer is in competition in a lot of ways with you know video games Magic. and pe- yeah. people's time, right? And I hear that all the time from people. I hear you know that are that are like either falling a little bit out of the hobby or struggling to stay in the hobby is like I don't have time. And sometimes what people mean when they say that is I don't want to spend time. <laughs> Yep, painting models right now. They I would were, rather yes. dive into hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, or you know, whatever uh, new new game that they're playing is, uh, yeah. or or whatever show they're watching. It, yes. Um, so ultimately, it's a battle for time, right? It, it, yeah. It is. It does not have the the thing that that Warhammer or min, tabletop miniatures uh, will always struggle with is they don't have a quick play uh, feature that is quite literally like install the game push quick play and just start playing mm-hmm. uh there's always something that needs to be done rules need to be uh read you know models need to be assembled um so yeah it, it is it is there, i think there is a limit to to just how many people and we've seen it here as a retail business uh for a very long time and there is a saturation point there is like a certain amount of uh inflow of cash that is available to any given hobby store at any given time 
it's funny we may have a, a period or a week or two where where sales are booming and you're like oh maybe we'll maybe we'll make some extra money this and then it'll be followed by two quiet weeks and you've realized that you've just made the same money <laughs> spread out just spread thing. out differently yeah, yeah and that's just yeah. how it is it's it's not yeah. like gaining it's it's a hobby that's how you get gray hairs man yeah yeah it's a hobby where uh <clears throat> where yeah you're you're there's like a faucet that's dripping some new people in and then it's over and some people are overflowing out and it's just constantly it's just maintaining that yeah and it's always been that way. So I, I don't, I don't know. I, but I, they've definitely making strides. I mean, the I think the yeah, and I, you know. I, I think this will be my thesis of this video, or you know, conclusion <clears throat> we can talk about. I think I, I don't necessarily think they've converted more non-hobbyists into hobbyists. Mm. I think that they've just done a great job of getting their brand out there. Yeah, and like made the net wider, and like yeah. they're, and they're catching more people that are actually want to show an interest in doing this sort of thing. Yeah, something that I do get asked. By uh, kind of more tenured hobbyists, are like, what about how are how's the new, you know, you got new people, young people. It's always about you know like people <clears> younger <throat> than us. And I think this will be the real telling metric, and this could be a problem for us in the future. Who knows? Um, maybe I'll be dead by then. But as uh, how are uh, how are you know what is it going to look like in 10, 20 years? Um, because of like things like. You know, obviously, generations younger than us are smaller than ever. Like, if you think of people that are in their 20s or younger, like, the, those generations are smaller than the ones before. Right, right, right. In terms of, like, how many, people, how many people there are. Yeah. people are having yeah. less kids. And, right. And, uh, this, and, and this mostly applies to Western And nations, then market yeah. conditions yeah. and things like that. Now, there are some counter-arguments. Like, I've, I've had 20-somethings tell me, like, mm -hmm. well, I'll never buy a house anyway, so I'm just going to spend it on Warhammer. So, so there is, like... Maybe it'll even out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for our sake, I hope so. Oh but, my gosh! Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it is. It is like I'm trying to think. Like, how is the recruiting going on? Are there? There's definitely. You know, there's always like I do. I do see uh, yeah, people partaking people and jumping again. in. I th I um, think, and this might just be our shop. Like you know, the fact that I've moved from Games Workshop to an independent. We're, we we see less kids starting the hobby here, yeah. but I, I think they probably, you know, I'd have to probably get like an up to date sort of thing from like games workshops and and talk to some of the guys I know there and see like are you still seeing kids come in mm -hmm. and and start the hobby? My guess would be the that the, this average starting age has gone up a little bit. I think so. Yeah, which isn't I don't think a bad thing. I think I think you're seeing more. Yeah, that like later teens, early twenties, and. Uh, the kind of kids with some part-time jobs and I don't, I don't know if, if, a, mm. if a mom, dad and kid are rolling into stores as much and just being like, oh, this looks cool and just buying up a bunch of work. Well, and, and I mean, like, uh, whether we want to talk about it or not, like the, the real the real dollar impact of doing that is, is vastly different than it was 10 years ago, right? Like uh, we used to sell a starter kit, a primer and a hobby starter set, like paint set uh, and a glue for like under 200 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Even as low as one hundred and fifty at some point, I remember. No, I mean obviously different era. Yeah, you know whatever. But yeah. you know they do have some products in that price range. Um, mm -hmm. But the era of like yeah, because they, they you know the eighty dollars starter kit today is a shell of what it used to be. Eighty dollars yeah. to yeah. get you. A I mean assault on Black Reach was was a, was like a remarkable. Yeah, Black Reach Skull Pass that yeah. era of the sixty seventy dollar box loaded with a hundred miniatures, um, and then and then you mm -hmm. add it. Yeah, there's definitely. Uh, a part of the Games Workshop uh, <clears throat> commercial location, whatever you want to call it, made up word there, or uh, whatever, a current era of operating costs. Yeah, I think it's. I think we've definitely reached a tipping point um, on certain things. Not I, not so much on the boxes of model uh, of models. I think mm. I think they can still basically charge whatever they want because I've just never. It never ceases to amaze me that people will 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 still buy the three hundred fifty dollar X or Y. It's it's just kind of like when they if they have the money and they want their toys they'll get them. But yep. uh I think it's it is the things like the twenty five dollar can of primer or the sure. this is in Canadian dollars or um or the uh, almost ten dollars a jar contrast paints or something. Like this yeah. this stuff does make it probably add quite a few barriers to the the parent is just going to be like ah, i don't know about that yeah well <laughs> yeah. the try it cost is is it's, is, is, is a higher. lot yeah, yeah, a yeah. Lot. now yeah. you know i can go on a spiel and be like well sure. have you signed up your kid for summer camp yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a week of summer camp is like easily 400 dollars, and that's just a week of some child care or whatever because you know well, i looked at hockey for my youngest yeah i almost yeah. fell out of my chair right. or whatever and i was like okay. you're like i just buy a whole warrior army for that and yeah. that's hours hundreds of hours yeah, exactly. thousands of hours exactly. Stick with it, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so anyway, 
I have two little things to fi- to finish on. Um, I think I always use I always use this company as like a almost like what do they call it in stocks where beta coefficient where you like you look at beta. this other company and compare it to this company mm. and, and they tend to trend together. Yeah, and I think sure. I think Lego sure has always been a good. Like, Lego is very interesting. That, I, oh man! When, when people are like, "Oh, will people do this in the future?" and I'm like, "Will people build Lego sets in the future?" Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, until that stops happening, I don't worry about the future of model kits and. and you know, yeah, yeah, and and even in the age of the again back to the 3D printing discussions, yeah. I mean, you would think that was another company that would have an existential crisis about, but no. Weird. It's they're, they're doing better than ever. Turns yeah, out, yeah. if you make the best brick ever, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And I think Ether yeah. Shop has a similar philosophy with their miniatures. Exactly. Um, but. Actually, this I don't know if this is relevant. Is very random. I'm always Mr. Tangent, but uh, I read. I just read Lego is now purposely going to uh, max. They're going to uh, always only make a finite number of certain things. Like, so they're they're trying to basically say because they realize that <laughs> that their products are devastating to the environment because of like a Lego brick just never decomposes. <laughs> it's too well made, yeah, yeah. It's like 150 to 200 years for plastic like that yeah, to decompose. Yeah, and then they tried to make a brick, yeah. they tried to R&D a brick that could decompose in like a reasonable amount of time and it was so shit they just decided, <laughs> decided it wasn't worth doing. Yeah. Um, so instead they said they're going to, they're capping how much they're going to make of anything. And that's an interesting thing in a capitalist world to say that like we have hot items that we could sell, sell so many of, but we're going to only, we're going to purposely, you're going to codify into our own artificial scarcity. We're going, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, that'll be a thing, but, uh, you could, yeah. I mean, games workshops kind of doing that now with their own, like they're not purposely doing, they have like, yeah, these companies do rhyme a lot because they have like this, this sort of like this Disney thing where like, remember like the Disney vault would open and you could only Mm -hmm. buy, Toy Story for like three months and then it would go away for a couple of years. I mean, it's a great movie, but it is a great movie. Yeah, <laughs> single tear yeah. at the end there. <laughs> Those songs really hit you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, Games Workshop, they've really t- like they've really started to like uh, to to get like hit stride with this sort of thing. Like you see, like terrain sets kind of rotate through this sort of like Disney Vault thing. Mm-hmm. They do it with like all the, the made to order stuff, yeah. all the old world metal things. Uh, you could argue that like a lot of some of these new releases uh, have a bit of a Disney Vault feel, where like you got to get them right away, yeah. otherwise you're waiting six to twelve months before you. It's going to be like normal on the shelf. That's right. So if you're lucky, yeah, we are dealing a little bit in a world of scarcity a little bit here. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's annoying. It's frustrating for consumers. It's frustrating for us. Yeah, we lose business all the time because people. I uh, can't get the thing they want. They want to support us, they can't get it. So then they just start going directly to the GW website, uh, which is unfortunate. I hope this is a capacity thing that will sort of solve soon-ish. Uh, you know, I think I think they get a couple more years of somewhat excuse, COVID excuses, but at some point, it's they gotta fix figure something out. I don't. I'm curious to see what their um, how their financials will look in terms of like uh, if their year end is end of April. So you'll learn. There'll be a report in in June or May or June that'll describe kind of how their year went and how and maybe maybe they left money on the table maybe they cast their net too wide, uh, you know we'll see how AOS four does so I don't know I I think they could use a bit of pruning or whatever you want to call it pruning that's good <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be that would help everyone actually I think I think I think there's an argument to be made that if they were to go back to a certain level of production and releases that was like maybe a 10% or 5% less, they would uh, still make good money and and keep everyone happy rather than the current stage, which is... Yeah, I mean, you, you can know. make the argument that like, what's the, op- what's the, what's the, op- what's the lost uh, cost opportunity yeah. of like their 20% best sellers not being on the shelf? Yes. Because they yeah. are too tied to this new release thing, yes. right? So, yeah. Or, or, or like, are they, you know, maybe this is a, a topic for another video, are mm-hmm. they artificially creating scarcity, mm-hmm. right? Which you we'll can never, never know. You can never count that out in never today's know. market, right? Never know. So what do you guys think? Do you do you think Warhammer is for everyone? Do you or <laughs> do you do you agree with us and say like, you know, it's a hard hobby. Um, it, it, it definitely weans out people and the people that are left uh, doing it for years are the people that are truly passionate about uh, and can't really uh, or sunken costs. Can't really. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's definitely a little bit of that. Cool. You just kind of momentum. Is <laughs> I always forward. did this. So I'll just continue doing it. <laughs> I hope not. I hope that's not why you're doing it. Uh, I hope that you are fascinated for, and you can't explain to any normal human being why yeah. you think this little tiny soldier is is so cool. Mm-hmm. Um, 
If you like this video, check out our other ones, like and subscribe, and you can check us on Patreon where you can become a member and there will be perks coming soon, special videos, etc. Until next time, guys, take care. Thanks, bye.